What if it was possible to have local fresh groceries delivered right to your door? Think of all the free time you'd have. Well, Instacart gives unlimited grocery delivery for one low monthly fee. Forgot that special ingredient in your favorite dish? Instacart can deliver it to your front door in as fast as one hour. You can shop multiple stores, see deals in your area, and save time and money. I've been using Instacart for over three years. I started using them in Arizona, and I'm using them here in Florida. I love the time-saving convenience. They pick the freshest products, and they keep my eggs safe, too. To receive your first delivery free, follow the link in the show notes so that Instacart knows that we sent you and to help support the show. Instacart, never step foot in a grocery store again. As we close out the year, I like to take time to look back at all the blessings and inspirations that our guests have brought to both you and I. This month, I have curated a very special lineup of guests that include never before heard excerpts from interviews, as well as the top rated episodes by you, our Empowered Within community. If you'd like to be in the know of all of our events, giveaways, and new episodes, head over to jenniferpilates.com and hit subscribe. Thank you so much for being a part of our Empowered Within community. Enjoy today's episode. Welcome to Empowered Within, a soul-quenching, transformational podcast that will set your soul on fire through candid and inspiring conversations Leading experts, celebrities, healers, and I share our journeys of how we've overcome challenges to living an empowered life from within. I'm your host, Jennifer Pilates. Welcome to another episode of Empowered Within. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another fabulous episode. Today, we have with me one of my great friends, Mr. Manny Cabo. Every once in a while in the ever competitive entertainment industry, a presence enters the scene that turns heads, opens eyes and ears, touches hearts, and makes a lasting impact on everyone they encounter. Such is the case with the multifaceted, commercial rocking, arts embracing, and award winning singer songwriter Manny Cabo. From his incredible four chair turn on NBC's The Voice and recently mirroring his vocal prowess and breaking linguistic boundaries on NBC's Telemundo's La Vaz, Cabo has been leaving his creative mark and vocal renaissance on an international level and across multicultural boundaries. Whether he's singing, acting, photographing, or hosting, his compelling focus and his artistry shines through and always leaves his fans and clients wanting more. Welcome, Manny. I'm so happy to have you here on the show today. I always say, you know, that's a lot of fanfare for a bald guy in a microphone, you know. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. And there's so much more than what I even said. Head. Well, uh, you're you. such an amazing individual. Thank you for being here today. I know my oh, listeners my are so excited to hear you and to hear your story. Thank you. You have such an impressive and multifaceted career. I know it wasn't easy, and I'd love to know how did you get to the place that you are today? Listen, I'm still trying to figure out, Jennifer. I really am, you know, and and, and to be fully transparent, because I try to be fully transparent in all these interviews. It's it's just one of those things where I just follow my heart. I know it sounds like a cop out, but it's really not. If it doesn't feel right, I just don't do it because, you know, what I've learned working at Apple computers, uh, believe it or not, for about, Mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, eight to 10 years and, and learning from the best in marketing, which is Steve Jobs. He told basically taught us that. If you don't do something you love, then you'll always have that little that little guy nugging at you, wanting you to quit. So what I did was, you know, it, it's pretty simple. I decided to do things that I was really passionate about, singing and motivating and uh, photography. And, you know, thanks to my dad, who unfortunately recently passed December 1st. And uh, everyone knows how hard that hit me because I literally took three months off. And I'm, yeah. I'm right now. Just to let you know the severity of how that impacted my family, I'm working with, you know, multi Grammy award winning producers and Emmy award winning directors. And I said, guys, I'm sorry if, if you need to find somebody else, then do it, because right now my heart has this huge void because he is the reason why I became an artist. I became a photographer and I became anything in this creative realm. So 
If you guys can't deal with that, then I'm sorry. It's just not meant to be. So that's basically my train mm -hmm. of thought. And listen, let's be realistic. We have to mourn. Uh, it, right. It's a huge and painful experience. And um, fortunately, obviously, he went pretty quickly. And, and I know that sounds, I guess, somewhat morbid, but I don't want anybody no. to suffer. I really, really don't. And especially right. somebody like that who was so full of love. But mm -hmm. I'm just like you, Jennifer. Listen, I'm just, I'm a hustler. Uh, I'm 51 right now, and I know people think I'm crazy even when I was on The Voice, like he's 45, and here I am competing with 18 years old, and not for nothing, I'm still kicking ass, and people are <laughs> looking to me, right? I, I learned this. Yeah, before. you are. <laughs> it, it always stuck with me. Uh, you know, all the haters in the world can hate you. You know, all the jealous people in the world can be jealous, but soon enough, they're going to call you for advice, and that's what happens. I need new haters because everyone loves me right now, and that's... I'm not boasting and it's not even being conceited. It's exhausting hating people, especially when you truly find out what they're all about. I've mm -hmm. always embraced everyone's diversity, you know, right. everyone's ability. I just want to see people succeed and you don't have to credit me. You know, you don't have to say, well, it was Manny's, uh, uh, you know, inspiration. Just do it. You know, if you right. want to shout out for me, awesome. But I do it unconditionally and, the universe has been good to me because you know what they say, the universe loves a stubborn artist. I met you, right? I met Clubhouse people. Yes, I know. Amazing. You're you're such an inspiration to me. I'm so sorry for your passing of your dad. And I, I recently, too, had my grandfather pass. And, and I, I resonate with you so much. It's mm. to honor and take for yourself. Yeah. That is the most important thing. And for your family, you know, I give you so much credit because in this time, that is tumultuous, to say the least. You know, you could still be hustling, but to honor and, and to sit back and say no, time out, you know, yeah. that that takes a lot. And I, I give you so much credit for that. Well, thank you. Well, you know, it's all about faith is a very obscure term. I'm not a Jesus freak by any chance, but I do believe in a higher power. And, you know, what is faith? Faith is believing that things will happen. You know, they don't you don't have to wait until they do happen to feel happy and content. You have to feel the emotion. And even though I'm dealing through a very, to use your word, which I love, tumultuous time, you have to believe that things always happen for a reason. And you don't have to understand what they're about. You just have to accept them. And the only way to accept them is to mourn, is mm -hmm. to say, okay, well, he's not coming back. So what would right. my dad uh, have wanted me to continue doing? And that's right. nothing different than what I was doing when he was alive. Now I got three girls that I've got to take care of. Of course, they take priority. But in order for me to take care of them, guess what, guys? And I always use the analogy of when the stewardess says, you know, make sure you put your mask on first before anybody else. And people are like, oh, my God, the light bulb goes off. It's so true. How can I help anybody else? If I don't help myself first, it's not egotistical at all. Quite frankly, it makes perfect sense. So that's all I'm doing. I got to do me in order for me to help you. That's basically it. It's not rocket science, Jennifer. No, it's not. And I agree with you. That is my motto all the time. I have to take time for me. I set aside the time so that I'm good, so that yeah. I can show up to serve everyone else in my family and, and, and through working clients like yourself. Sure. It's so important to take that yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. So let me ask you this. So I was reading about you have a daily mindset and I would love for you to share with our audience your mindset and where that came from. Oh, man, my mindset is probably the impetus of, of what keeps me going. You know, the first thing I do when I wake up, man, I, I for all of your listeners and I don't care what background you have, what race, what nationality, what religious creeds you believe in. I, I, I don't care what you do for a living, but you have to live in a attitude of gratitude. The first thing I do when I wake up, and I'm, I'm going to share this with you word for word. I mean, I'm talking verbatim. Thank you, Spirit, for another day of life so I can pursue my dreams with passion and assist others in doing the same. I repeat that every day for the past, I don't know, 10 years. So the fact that you're here still with us, you know, should resonate with all of you because we, we focus on the things that we really have no business on focusing. Everyone's focusing on what they don't have, what they wish they did have, what my neighbor has. You know, look at this celebrity on TV. You guys are going about it the wrong way. In order to receive and achieve the things that you want in life, and I learned this the hard way because I was right there with you. I realized that you have to be grateful for the things that you have. And you may not think that you have a lot when you look around, like, what's Manny talking about? Guys, 
I'm grateful that I have a bed. I'm grateful that I have clean water. I'm grateful that I could walk to the bathroom to brush my teeth. I'm grateful that I have a toothbrush, you know, and it sounds silly, but is it really, Jennifer? Is it really silly when you think back mm -hmm. and you start going through the motions? And I'm very big with uh, uh, the whole Abrams and Hicks mentality of segment intending. Like I walk into every segment, like right now, right before I, I delved into this interview, I said, you know what? I intend to have an amazing joyful and fun-filled episode with Jennifer Pilates and I expect the words to come out eloquently and I expect to impact and influence the ears of everyone that listens to this episode it's not difficult to do and you know what are we having an amazing episode right now we're having an amazing time and we are such two peas in a pod right. because I too basically almost verbatim said the same exact thing prior to our podcast. Well, there you go. I am a huge law of attraction, right. like Abram Hicks. I mean, I'm all about it. What you put out comes back to you tenfold. And no, if you it really start does. like it really does. And starting your day with gratitude, I do the same thing. I wake up my eyes and the first thing I say is thank you, God. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Another day. Thank you. I try to look at everything in life and go, okay, thank you. Even the, the moments, you know, you're stuck in traffic, the phone doesn't work, the microphone broke and you go, okay, that's yeah. great. Okay. What am I learning from this moment? Doesn't have to be a bad moment. What am I learning from it? What's the blessing mm -hmm. and the lesson? It may take me a minute to get there. Of course, you know, every once in a while we're like, oh God, but we get there. And I think that's, what's so important. And that's what I love about you, your attitude and your conviction through everything that you've been through and you're still out there and going every day. Are you ready to lose inches, increase strength and tone your body from head to toe? Are you ready for a total body, mind, and spirit transformation? I am excited to announce that I am launching my exclusive eight-week Pilates Return to Life training program. This will give you an opportunity to have a total body, mind, and spirit transformation of health and wellness to a new lifestyle. Imagine in seven days, you will feel a difference. In 14 days, you will see a difference. And in eight weeks, you will have your new Pilates body. Body. So what do you say? Want to join me on the mat? Head over to jenniferpilates.com today. Space is limited. Use a special promo code EW and the word special, EW special to receive $200 off while space is available. Head on over to jenniferpilates.com and I'll see you on the mat. It, you know what? And it's not easy. And just to add to what you were saying, which is exactly my point, the difference between you and myself and the people that are actually, you know, uh, uh, I, I don't want to say succeeding because I'm still in that climb. You know, you expect good things to happen. Mm -hmm. See, uh, along that journey, you're anticipating getting the answers because I've been doing my entertainment and singing for close to what 17 years and people think that i've you know i've re i've achieved this great status of success but here's the thing here's the reality and this is, is transferable and relatable in every field you're only as good as your last show so the voice happened for me five years ago la voz happened to me two years ago but that's where they stay you know, I have to keep on going consistently, coming up with the next big platform, the next big stage to perform. And even right now, I'm, I'm on the microphone with you. I'm always on stage because you always want to put your best foot forward. And the only way to do that is preparation. Before this interview, I sat, I got a good night's sleep. I made sure that I had my shot of whiskey beforehand so I could <laughs> let loose <laughs> again. Notice how I threw that in, right? I love that. I love that. I had right? a glass of orange juice, but next time I'll be doing whiskey, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You prepare for what's coming. And the only way to ease the tension and the stress in life is to do more preparation. Before I go on Clubhouse, again, segment intending, getting my questions laid out. Maybe I don't even have questions. Maybe that day I'm set to sponge mode. I just want to learn and learn. You know, people love to hear themselves talk and I don't want to hear it because I'm a singer. We are known as the most egotistical people on the planet, but don't judge a book by its cover because people like me, I want to see you dominate the stage. I want to see you rocking out. And 
I can speak from experience because I've sold out 60,000 capacity arenas, but I've also played for the bartender on a Tuesday night at the Acme Underground in New York City. So I don't want to hear it. You know, you always have to perform to the best of your ability. You got to give it 100% in anything that you do in terms of pursuits of life. I completely agree with you. And along those lines, I know that you have such a big heart and you love to give back. And I'm wondering if you can share with us some of the charities near and dear to your heart over the years. I, no, that's that's uh, that's actually a pretty easy question to answer because my big thing is with the kids, the future of this planet. Uh, I'm just hoping that, you know, they can do it better than our generation, because obviously there are a lot of, uh, you know, missing gaps that are going on in the world today. There's a lot of separation. There's a lot of segregation. There's a lot of hate. There's a lot of angst, uncertainty. You know, pick an adjective. And I've always focused on catering to the needs of the new generation of the future and catering to the future rock stars. That's why, to be honest with you, that's one of the impetuses behind my podcast is to not only share knowledge from my own experiences, but share knowledge from the people that I've encountered over the years uh, and focusing on the future of where we go musically and from a society level. So kids have always been, you know, um, I don't know, they have a special place in my heart. Having a daughter and, and seeing what she's going through, especially through this pandemic, uh, I'm mm -hmm. trying to guide our future leaders. And, you know, I've, I've won awards for a lot of my songs on anti-hate, mm -hmm. anti-bullying, because I've been bullied when I was in school, you know, on the corporate level, because people don't understand there's, right. there's totally different types of bullying. Um, so what I went through growing up as a kid, it wasn't as severe but it was as severe, as right. severe. And, and I'll explain myself because everything is readily available. Everyone's videotaping everything. There's such this immediate access to video and recordings that it's always been present with us, people. Hello. Right. It's always been there. It's just we're capturing it now. So I can speak from experience that it's not fun. Grammar school and high school can be pretty intimidating and, and could be a, a pretty miserable experience for a lot of these kids out there. So I'm just trying to bring awareness and be the voice mm -hmm. for a lot of these kids, you know, and uh, my co-writer, Bonnie Warren and myself, we wrote Where Are Your Words. Um, oh, my God. I, it, it's just this passionate innate feeling of of catering to the needs of our uh you know of our youth and i i think that's where i get my drive you know always thinking that i have kids that i don't want to let down you know aside from my my fellow musicians out there that are struggling during this pandemic you mm -hmm. know <laughs> What if it was possible to have local fresh groceries delivered right to your door? Think of all the free time you'd have. Well, Instacart gives unlimited grocery delivery for one low monthly fee. Forgot that special ingredient in your favorite dish? Instacart can deliver it to your front door in as fast as one hour. You can shop multiple stores, see deals in your area, and save time and money. I've been using Instacart for over three years. I started using them in Arizona, and I'm using them here in Florida. I love the time-saving convenience. They pick the freshest products, and they keep my eggs safe, too. To receive your first delivery free, follow the link in the show notes so that Instacart knows that we sent you and to help support the show. Instacart, never step foot in a grocery store again. You heard it through the grapevine here, the story of dry farm wines. Pure, natural wines begin from a healthy farm and ends with a vibrant sip from biodiverse vineyards to antioxidant-rich grapes. Dry farm wines, pure, natural wines, express a completely unique wine experience, conveniently curated with wines of your choice on a schedule that's right for you. I fell in love with Dry Farm Wines about three years ago after I noticed I was having allergies drinking wine. When introduced to Dry Farm Wines, what I loved about them is that they're organic and biodynamic. They're vegan and lower in alcohol, sugar-friendly to keto and paleo, and free of toxic additives and low to no sulfates. You are drinking a healthy glass of wine. Not only that, they have an incredible happiness promise. If you don't like a wine for any reason, they will either replace the bottle or refund you in full, whichever you prefer. To receive your penny bottle of wine, follow the link in the show notes so that Dry Farm Wine knows that we sent you and to help support the show. Dry Farm Wines, pure, natural, great wines from around the world delivered to your door. 
I can't let you gloss over a few things. You have won so many awards for everything that you've done, your music, your photography, your, your songwriting. And one award that uh, I came across was that you won the humanitarian award for your song, Hate Has No Home Here. Right. And I'm wondering what kind of impact did that bring to your heart when that transpired for you? You know, I guess it's not, uh, I'm not relishing in the moment of the actual accolade. I'm just hoping that it really brought awareness. I'm, I really mm -hmm. hope that it helped people open their eyes and be like, you know what, maybe he's got something pretty interesting yeah. here. He's got a powerful message here. I just want people to, who cares that they mm -hmm. bought the song? Right. I want people to sit there and listen to the actual lyrical content of the song. It's a big deal what's going on. You know, people are judging others just by their appearance. And you got to let that go, man. That's a yeah. pretty immature attitude, but we see it all the time. And, there, you know, it, it's not age oriented. You know, it's not bipartisan. It, everyone, everyone is feeling this and everyone is making judgments. And I'm calling everyone out of there. You need to reevaluate yourself and what's really important in life. Oh, 100%. I agree with you. I'm in love with all of the, the powerful inspiration and motivation in there, but that hate that has no home here. I mean, mm. how is that not playing number one on every radio station right now? Because, I don't you know. know. When you when you get the answer to that question, let me know because we're going to try to tackle <laughs> I feel like we should be making some phone calls. I feel like we should be resending it into ABC, NBC, CBS. I, I really do because I'm thinking right now, it's almost like you've been so far ahead of your times in so many ways that it's easier to come back and be in this moment now and mm -hmm. to almost repurpose it totally how it's not playing everywhere right now, how it can't be a new anth anthem at this point. Right. We desperately need more of that. So well, maybe let's sign, up, let's sign a petition. Let, let, let's yeah. do a coalition to get the song out there because that's initially what I wanted to. But and, and notice one thing, you, you really struck a chord here um, that it's so relevant, right? And this was done three years ago. Mm -hmm. And you notice, what does that tell you? We're not right. learning anything. I no. think we're we're getting worse. I think social mm -hmm. media has had such a, a negative impact on what people <laughs> believe is the right thing to do, the right way to look, the right, right things to say. And we're forgetting about the commonality and, and the relationships that, that we're destroying because of it. And this pandemic has definitely not helped because everyone is segregated no. already. Right. So it, it's just compounding it's, everything. But I don't know, I could talk yeah. about this all day. Definitely. So many things have been highlighted and I try to look at it and I, I think that Personally, social media has gotten way too far out of control on censorship. While mm. I don't agree that, you know, people should watch what they're saying, but I do feel freedom of speech. I do mm. believe that's what we're supposed to have here in the United States right. of America. And sure. that has very much been lost, which definitely, you know, you can hear it in my voice. Pick, You know, it's definitely a bone of contention with me. I agree with you on the social media. It goes back to what you're speaking on, on the bullying aspect and what kids are going through. And now, you know, again, with this situation, I like to call it of this past year, because I don't like to give it any energy. Um, mm -hmm. I do feel that the blessings that have come out of this are through the ugliness that are coming out of it. The darkness is rising. You know, the ugly things that may have been put underneath the carpet for a long time mm -hmm. are really coming out. The light is on them. And now it's like you're saying, we mm -hmm. haven't learned from the past, but I would hope now going forward that people are not turning a blind eye any mm -hmm. longer to the horrible things that are going on with the bullying. We could go on and on with all of the different, the sex trafficking and the this and the that and the, you know, we need to get back to the basics of loving one another and supporting thy neighbor and yeah. being there sure. and not shutting our door and turning our back when we all need each other so much at this time. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Mm -hmm. Ugly gets really old. <laughs> Ugly yes. gets old so quick. And Ugly. it's so exhausting trying uh, to be somebody that you're not. It oh, really my does. gosh. I would say, you know, the blessing out of this last year for me is I feel that it's really come back to a place of being supportive with family. We are here for such a short period of time. And you and I especially know that after our losses this year. That yeah. We truly are grateful for every moment and every person that crosses our path because we know the universe has a divine plan for us. Yeah. And we lean into that. Sure we do. Mm -hmm. I know I do. And you yeah. know, I would kill. You know, <laughs> it's funny, but you start analyzing, you know, uh, moments in your life where I'd sit here and hear my dad bitch and moan about things. And 
it would bother me then. I would kill. I would literally give up my life to hear him oh. complain one more time. And people out there listening to this podcast, make sure that you don't regret those moments. Say I love you. Say thank you to those people in your life, uh, if, especially if it's your family, close, mm -hmm. your mom, and dad, your sister, so you don't know. You honestly don't know how long you or they will be here present. And believe me, mm -hmm. you will regret it. There, There's this quote that I love that, you know, uh, uh, people bring more flowers to a funeral than they do in life because regret is more powerful than gratification. And that couldn't be any more true. Uh, you know, it, it's like, if, uh, if they're not here, guys, it's way too late. And you got to live with that. So learn how to love. Stop being stupid uh, and being egotistical yeah. and selfish and just learn to appreciate mm -hmm. everyone in your <clears> house <throat> bite the bullet say you know no problem and even if you know here here's where the power of knowledge comes in even if somebody doesn't agree with you that's okay i've learned in this industry that you will never ever oh, ever yeah. please everybody it's never going to happen and I think that's applicable to everyone. I think people are so worried about the opinions and the hearsay and, and the re the receptiveness of people that you got to let that go, especially in the family. You know, if they don't agree with you, it's cool. Say, you know what, mom, dad, I, I don't agree with you, but I do appreciate your, your verdict mm -hmm. on that and your defensive posture. And it's all good. And the world will be such an easier place. Oh, for my gosh. Wouldn't it, though? I can respect your stance. You can respect mine. It doesn't have to be the same. No. But it no. doesn't mean that suddenly we're going to World War Three either. No. And I don't know how everything, and I don't think it happened overnight, that it went from zero to 100 on, but if you don't agree with me, then, the, then we can't be friends or we're not family. And I mean, it's the, the segregation is just... It's getting back to the heart of matter and to the heart of life that we are here for a minute and we better really enjoy and be grateful for that minute and everyone that's involved with that minute in our lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and here's my disclaimer. Uh, and I, this is a harsh reality. I've told people that have had issues with this thing. I'm like, listen, if your family's causing that much issue, then you got to get rid of them. And that's a tough mm -hmm. pill to swallow. I'm like, yes. you got to get rid of the toxicity. It's right. not your problem to keep people happy. Right. If they're the ones that are staying in that ignorant bubble, then you know what? You need to depart yourself, mm -hmm. be happy, do what you love. Eventually they'll come around. And if they don't, that's on them. That's not on you. Right. But you always maintain your integrity. You always maintain your peace, your calm uh, uh, nature, because that just shows maturity. But you can't always cater to the needs of the people that are 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 doing wrong that are bringing you down because I've had to get rid of my best friends. Jennifer, between you and mm -hmm. me, there's full transparency. Uh, I've got rid of all my best friends, every single one. I don't talk to anybody. I talk to you. I talk to people that are, are in relation to my career, my family, of course, because dealing with friends that want to commit suicide, but that are going out and getting drunk every night. I've been there constantly and constantly, but here's what I've learned. The more you help them, the more disservice you're doing. Like you have to let people fall on their face. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not telling you let go completely to the point where they commit the act that's, that you can't go back from. But there's got to be a certain plateau that you reach and be like, all right, listen, the next time I'm not going to be here because you need to understand, you need to, you need to embrace your mistakes. And that's all I'm going to say about that because I don't want to divert. Right. As you notice, I'm really passionate about helping people, but there's a certain limit that you have to cut yourself off because you're doing a disservice to somebody. 100%. And I know that you and I both have had this throughout our lives with family, with friends, and it, yeah. it, it's very difficult. And it's exhausting. You, it's it's exhausting. exhausting. And it's learning to set boundaries and healthy boundaries and knowing that you're worthy to yeah. say no. Saying no is very powerful. And I think that sometimes people forget every time you say yes, you're saying no to something else. So the next time right. you say yes to something, I always encourage, you know, my clients and my listeners, I want you to think about what you're saying no to at the same yeah, time. There, there's nothing wrong with saying, you know what? Uh, uh, let me think about it for a second. I, I can't, I want to focus on your question, but let me focus on that a little bit further when my mind's not too clouded. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with it. And guess what? If they have a problem with that, then you know to say no. Right. Because they're not respecting your boundaries. One thing exactly. that I do, and I bet that you probably do the same thing. I never answer my phone. If it's my mother, if it's my father, or if it was right. my grandfather, of course, I'm going to answer my phone. But sure. any other time, I let it go to voice message. Because one, if you leave a voice message, you care. 
and you actually want to speak with me and right. whatever you're leaving, I can take that moment. And like you're saying, I can sort of like go, okay, now I'm prepared for whatever they're asking or, you know, mm. or whatever. And then I can get back to that person. Whereas I'm sure you've been through this too. You know, again, this instant gratification, phone calls, the social media, the apps on the phone. It's like someone leaves you a text and you feel guilty sometimes, or I used to, if I didn't mm. respond right away. And now I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, like there are certain times a day that at night when I turn my phone off altogether, when I turn it on in the mornings after my meditation, after my time to prep mm -hmm. for my day. And then I let the world in. It's those healthy boundaries. But again, like you're saying, I mean, I'm 47. It's we're work. We are a work in progress. We didn't like go. Oh, we're amazing, and now we set boundaries and we're healthy. We still get pulled into things, and we still are working on ourselves every day. And I think that's important for everyone to know that we're all in this together, and yeah. we're all willing to help and pull each other up along the way. But you have to want that help, and you have to be open to it. Sure. Yeah. No. I agree. You know, I'm not, I have nothing to say about that because you said it exactly. Yeah. I want to talk about your podcast, Mojo for Musicians, and that you are offering musician manifestation meditation. Well, I'm all about the good vibes, oh, the that's juju. So funny. And that's you so know, funny. I want to know how this came about and how it's working. Do tell. Well, I tell you what, uh, it, it's great that you mentioned that. Oh my God, that's so funny. As an aside, I was thinking about that actually last night. I mean, uh, a lot of my um, my guru friends in the industry are like, you got to take that down. You got to monetize it because that's gold. You spend mm -hmm. a lot of time putting together your manifestation. So, you know, I'm going to leave it up there. It's free mm -hmm. now. But yes, I'm de definitely going to take it down because it has helped me over the years. And it's nothing different than what you, let's just say, heard. Uh, it's just a, a list of affirmations that have helped me on a daily basis achieve my successes as a musician. Mm -hmm. And by no stretch am I nowhere near where I want to be. However, it has helped me climb gradually you know that that hill of adversity and challenges it's just something that has been very important to me so i want to share what has helped me in my life with my fellow musicians and like you said uh to use your word little juju a lot of musicians <laughs> don't understand that because you know the ego plays a very big part in in our mistakes and our ignorance unfortunately and our setbacks because we don't let go of certain things because we, we feel threatened, okay? And that's one of the things. And let me tell you, between you and me and this grand piano, I had a bigger ego than any of the stadiums that I've played. But I've learned that it's all nonsense. Mm -hmm. And through meditation, I've learned to quiet the nonsense and to allow peaceful thoughts and reading books. Russell Simmons' book is fantastic. I recommend that to anyone out there. Uh, um, success Through Stillness. And I've learned that when your brain is quiet, uh, and believe me, that that's a few and far in between moments. We have about 60,000 thoughts per day. Our brain is craving some quiet time. And when we give it that quiet time, we come up and, and we flourish these incredible spurts of creativity just come out of nowhere maybe you're acutely more aware of links or people's conversations uh, and that's when i've come up with my best ideas in mojo mm -hmm. for musicians came from my meditation and everyone knows me as the uh, the musician's motivator because i keep musicians going and especially during these dismal times you know you can't give up and and from different walks of life in, in the musician realm, from guitar players and drummers and singers and engineers and producers, I'm just grateful that my musical journeys have uh, afforded so many great relationships in the industry that now I can share with all of my listeners. And it's doing very, very well because I guess the energy that has been brought to it and a lot of my, my friends have told me, bro. Dude, whatever, pick one. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta get a podcast going. You would be perfect for it. And I did. I, I yeah. heard radio a few years back, and they're like, people, people, shut up and listen when you speak, Manny. That's no joke. You know, people listen to you. And I guess maybe you know, ever since I was a kid, my mother, you know, my mother was very religious, and she, and they always used to tell her, you know, you got to watch your kid. He's got a very influential mouth, and. It would always concern her. You're like, what does that even mean? Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and now I understand as I get older, you know, you can be uh, a martyr. You could be somebody to spread great word or you could be the next Hitler and spread disease and evil into the world. So mm -hmm. you have to make a decision of what you want to bring into this world. And I chose positivity and light 
as you would say. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what Mojo for Musicians is all about, offering light and possibility and, and some hope for the musical community. I love that. I think that's so important. So tell us, what can we look forward to? What's coming next for Manny? What's on your wheelhouse next? Well, you know what people have been asking me, Manny, bro, the last time you did a, a musical release was Stratospheric. And I got the title from um, Pharrell Williams on the show. And I remember, and, and I put it in my bio, you know, Pharrell's like, Manny, your voice is just stratospheric. You can make a hit record today and every genre would listen to it. Mm -hmm. So I released Stratospheric and it's been five years. So now this year, I'm focusing on two things. Um, my podcast, Mojo for Musicians, which, by the way, you can go to my website, mannycabo.com, and my Instagram handle is Mojo for Musicians. Join up, please. I'd love to have you there. Let me know who you'd like me in an interview and so on and so forth. But this year is going to be all about the music. And I've got probably, you're the first person I've told this, I've got seven brand new releases uh, that I am excited about. It's It's been a long time coming. I'm working with Grammy Award winning engineers, producers, Emmy Award winning directors. So, the quality, the sound, the passion is all going to be there, and I'm going to blow people's minds, especially my fans are going to be really, really content and uh, happy with what I've got for them, because I couldn't do this without the help of my supporters. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is so exciting. Congratulations. I, for one, cannot wait, because I love your songs. I love your message. Everything is so positive. Thank I'm you. I'm super excited, and of course, I love popping in on your podcast. Everyone should definitely go subscribe rate and review his podcast let's get him lifted <laughs> on the pages that would be amazing so now comes that time man okay, okay. when i ask the question uh should, should i have to sit back or get or take another sip of whiskey i, I was go. gonna suggest the, <laughs> the sip of whiskey i definitely the sip of whiskey okay <laughs> there it is you heard all it. right you i heard it. i can hear the ice going i love it okay cabo yes tell me what is one thing that no one knows about you? That I have a fear of failing. Fear of failing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's that's my impetus, you know. And uh, the thing that people don't understand in this life, you know, um, perception is reality, especially now with all these social media platforms that I share the same empathy uh, with all of you out there. You know, the next big move, especially in this industry where you have a little bit of success and people are relying on you to continue that trend. And sometimes it isn't that way, you know, and this past year has been brutal for me. I haven't worked since March. I've been collecting unemployment, doing side jobs here. Sometimes I've delivered pizza. There you go. You guys have it. So I'm right there with you and building my brand. And it's scary how you could have this amazing two, three year spurt and everything comes to a screeching halt. So, the piece of advice that I can offer everyone out there is definitely find a side hustle, something that you're passionate about. This is the time to learn new pieces of software. This is the time to understand the platforms that are out there. This is a time to use your hardship to turn them around to creating the messages that can help other people. And I've capitalized on that, uh, especially over the last three months. Mm -hmm. And believe me, in the myths of the demise of my dad, it has been brutal but ironically, it has also shown me a path of clarity. It, it has shown me uh, a way to be more focused on what I want now. So the only two things I'm working on right now is my podcast and my music, because that's the dearest thing to me. A, it can expedite and I can capitalize on better ROIs, you know, return on investments, especially with the time that I have. But the one thing that has always helped me, even in the abyss of darkness, is you have to believe. You have to believe to achieve. You can never, ever lose hope because once you lose that hope inside, you're dead in the water. And it's tough to come back from that. No matter how dark it gets, stop what you're doing, right? Meditate, quiet your mind, and get back on track because things always work out. They always do. And, and by the way, I repeat that a thousand times a day. Things are always working out for me. Always. Mm -hmm. And you know what? They do. They do. Miraculously, I've survived over the past year. Uh, in ways that I never thought possible. So you have to you have to err on the side of caution with your emotions. Your emotions can play a huge part with your manifestations. And don't wait for things to happen for you to be happy. Expect things to happen. That's the key to life. That's the key to all the manifestations that you want in life. Don't wait for those moments to happen. 
you know, expect them to happen, but be happy now. Like right now, I'm ecstatic talking to you. Like this is all I'm focused on is our heartfelt dialogue, you know, with, with Jennifer Pilates. And then the next segment, whether I'm brushing my teeth or driving in the car, that's important. Live in the moment, people. Don't get caught up in the nonsense and in the chaos of this world. Take your time, but believe that everything will always work out and it always will. I promise. That was beautiful, Manny. Oh my gosh, my heart is so full right now. I cannot thank you enough for being here, for sharing your journey, your talents, your incredible energies today, Manny. This has thank been you. my honor. Please, um, <laughs> once again, let our listeners know where can they get in touch? Where should they be following you? Absolutely. I mean, everything and anything that has to do with the Manny Cabo world, whether it's photography, whether it's music, whether it's my podcast, is at Manny Cabo. Dot com. That's Manny, M-A-N-N-Y, Cabo, like Cabo St. Lucas. Uh, and depends on whatever platform you're on. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Clubhouse, Instagram, and it's all the same, The Manny Cabo. If you want to follow my podcast, it's the only other thing that I have a different handle for. It's Mojo for Musicians. So families out there, musicians, if you're looking for inspiration, if you're looking for the real knowledge, you know, questions that I couldn't find answers to when I was delving into this industry, they're there. Look me up, send me a message, let me know who you'd like me to interview, and I'd love to engage in a conversation with you. Oh, thank you again, Manny. You're amazing. And we look forward to your new release. Look forward to the new podcast, new episodes coming out. You're amazing. Thank you, thank you again for being here. You're so welcome. And just as an aside, be ready. The one single has to do with all the ladies in the world. That's all I'm going to say. <gasps> but I guarantee you, how many women are in this world? And you, for you gentlemen out there, don't forget that if it wasn't for a woman, we would not be here on this planet. So that's all I'm going to say. The big release is is coming. So be on the lookout for that. We will be. Thank you again, Manny. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. It's totally my honor. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Empowered Within with Jennifer Pilates. Your feedback is important. It helps me to connect with you and gives me insight into who you are and what you're enjoying about the show. For today's show notes and discount codes from today's sponsors, head over to jenniferpilates.com. Until next time, may you live an empowered life from within.